Hey y'all, welcome to Christ Church. Good morning. I'm Harrison McLeod. Again, it's my privilege to welcome you to our service here at Christ Church in Greenville, South Carolina for the 10th Sunday after Pentecost. I'd like to share with you just a couple of announcements before we begin our worship service. First, I hope you'll remember uh, that at 2 o'clock and 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoons, we are able to offer uh, two services of Vespers. Uh, so I hope you'll sign up for that. Uh, we do require you to actually sign up so that we'll know uh, who's here and we can be prepared to receive you. Uh, but you can sign up online. Uh, if you're not able to join us in person for worship, please remember uh, that you can visit um, any of our uh, offerings on social media. I'd also like to remind people that as we approach uh, the new year, we, we will be electing uh, new delegates for Dawson Convention and new wardens and members of our vestry. So if you have someone you'd like to nominate or if you're interested in serving yourself, uh, please make sure to submit that nomination to the nominating committee. Again, I'd like to welcome you to our service this morning and we'll begin in just a moment. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Here ends the lesson. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I probably don't need to tell you that, um, that preachers are, by practice, storytellers. Uh, we love to, to spin a yarn or tell a tale. But I think um, with today's gospel lesson, uh, the, the gospel is more compelling than any story I could make up. Today we hear the story of the disciples in the boat on the Sea of Galilee. Uh, it's not their first time to be out on the Sea of Galilee, but it certainly is memorable. Uh, just yesterday evening, they were with Jesus as he fed the 5,000 on the shore. And then at his direction, uh, they get into the boat so that they can make their way to the other side of the sea. And as they begin their journey, everything is normal, it's routine, it is, it is just as it should be, just as they expected. And as they row, they make their way further and further and further into the sea. 
And as the, the night begins to, to fade away and, and just before the morning comes, the wind begins to rise and, and the waves begin to crash against the boat, their anxiety builds and they begin to fear for their lives. They are concerned that they'll perish at sea. And I can imagine they, they look back over their shoulder at where they want to get to, their destination, and they, they look back behind them at the shore where they departed yesterday evening. And, and as they look into the distance, they see um, a figure. They think maybe a ghost, maybe an apparition. Um, who, who else would be walking toward them on the water? And Peter somehow has just a, a glint of recognition. He, and he looks out at the distance and he, and he calls out to the figure, Jesus, if that's you, bid me to come out on the water and join you. And Jesus answers, come. And I can only imagine Peter as he sits there in the, in the boat, he hears the response to his question, the invitation, and somehow he decides it's a good idea. So he swings his legs over the side of the boat, maybe takes a deep breath and, and pushes off the side and takes the first, the second, the, the, the third step perhaps. And then maybe a wave uh, splashes spray in his face and, and he, he has a little epiphany. He's, he's out in the middle of the Sea of Galilee and he's, he's walking on the water yards away from the boat and he begins to, he begins to fear, he begins to have doubt. He begins to sink. And in desperation, he calls out to his friend, the one whose voice he heard yesterday offer the blessing over the bread and the fish, the same voice that he's grown accustomed to, the same voice that said, Come. He calls out to that voice, Save me. And Jesus reaches out his hand and he takes hold of Peter, lifts him, and the two get back in the boat and the waves calm and they continue their journey. That's really a remarkable story. It's an incredible story. And I wonder what it is that we make of Peter in that particular instance. I wonder if we, we want him to succeed. We want him to, 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 to leave the safety of the boat and to, to make that journey across the waters. We... We want him to be courageous. We want him to be the rock. But, but no matter how much we want him to succeed, we, we need him to fail. But let me ask, how, how gratifying or satisfying would the story be if Peter throws his legs over the side of the boat, takes a few deep breaths, pushes himself off, takes the, the first, the second, the third tentative step towards Jesus, and, and then sort of buoyed by his confidence and his faith, he just bounds across the water, gathers Jesus in his arms, they exchange a, a loving and courageous hug, they make their way back to the boat, that they get in, the waves calm, they finish their journey, and they live happily ever after. Would we be more satisfied if that were the story? And I think, of course we wouldn't be. Because if that were the story, it wouldn't be our story. We've been journeying for months now through, through chaos, through confusion, through the night of this pandemic, through questions about racial equality and social justice. Just the anxiety of a presidential election alone is enough to, to, to breed anxiety in so many people. We find ourselves perhaps uh, buffeted by the waves or uh, whipped by the wind and we, we call out and we, we, we look for that hand. We look for Christ among us, reaching out to us to offer us that saving hand. And I think the truth is, when we're honest with ourselves, when we see the world around us through the eyes of faith or, or with the, the heart of love that Christ gives us, when we, 
when we approach the world from that stance, when we take those first tentative steps, I think we discover that indeed that, that hand of Christ is extended to us. And sometimes that looks like uh, our spouse or partner who offers us a hand, a word of encouragement. Sometimes it looks like a, a neighbor, a loved one, a friend, a stranger, a niece, a nephew, a grandparent. Just some kind word. Sometimes it's, it's the woman at the grocery store behind the mask who offers us just a, a kind day as we check out with our groceries. The reality is, if we open our eyes of faith, we can see Christ's hand extended to us so many times during any given day. And we take hold of that hand and we're saved by that grace. The most wonderful part of that story is, today, if we're attentive, we, we can receive that outstretched hand of Christ offering us life and hope that's our experience today. And tomorrow, perhaps it's our turn to extend our hand and offer the love of Christ to someone else. Let us reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, begin on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Donald, our president, Henry, our governor, Knox, our mayor, and the Congress and the courts, for all who serve in our armed forces and their families. We pray for peace throughout the world and especially in the Middle East. And we pray for the victims of terror attacks and we remember before you and pray for the protection of our Christian brothers and sisters who face danger or persecution for their faith. We pray for victims of all natural disasters, for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus, for comfort for those grieving loved ones who have died, and peace for those who are fearful as the virus spreads, for those in isolation, those who have lost their job or their business, and for all those in our communities involved in ministering to the sick, especially for all health care workers and for those on our parish prayer list. Finally, let us bring to God all our petitions and thanksgivings using the words which Christ himself taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen.